Okay, so for this challenge, it's the first time that we're really using code. Um, the first thing you're going to want to check is that you're viewing the code blocks for your sprite and not for your devices. Um, when this page loaded, it had the devices tab open, and I'm actually coding for a device called Kodi. That's certainly not what I want to be coding right now. I'm going to want to click on my sprites tab and make sure that I have my panda um, highlighted. Now again, you can change your panda's name if you like. Let's call my one Bob. So I want Bob to first move 10 steps right. Now, for that code to execute, there's going to have to be an event. So I always want to start with an event block. I'm going to go with the topmost event block, which is when green flag clicks, because the green flag is just here, and it's really easy to click on that to execute my code whenever I'd like to to check what it is that I've programmed my sprite to do. The next thing I want to do is have Bob walk 10 steps right. Now that's probably gonna be under the tab called motion. You can see that the M block have tried to organize their code blocks in a way in which you can easily find blocks the two particular jobs. So for motion to move my sprite, I wanna be in this tab here. And right at the top, I can see handily that is move 10 steps. Now it doesn't say in what direction Bob will be moving. So let's find out by actually running our code and seeing in which direction our panda Bob moves. Okay, so we can see it quite clearly. I'll do it one more time. You should see that Bob moves towards the right hand side. Okay, so Bob moves right if I say move 10 steps. So I've, I've accomplished task one, walk 10 steps right. Next, I want to move 20 steps left. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is pull in 10 steps, but because I'm going in the opposite direction, it's not going to be a positive number. We use negative numbers to imply the opposite direction as to which direction the positive number led. So for this, I'm going to change my value to negative 20, and I'm going to hit execute to check that. Okay, so what we see is that Bob has moved, if, I, if you just look at the x value down here, when I click on the green flag, my x value decreases by 10, and that's because I've moved 10 steps right, and I've moved 20 steps left. So overall, I'm moving 10 steps left. If I want to see that, then I can break up these blocks and add a time, um, a time block, which is under control. So I can say, wait one second between moving 10 steps right and 20 steps left. So let's execute that code now, and we should see Bob move right and then left. Okay, so we see that. That might be useful for whilst we're checking our codes to make sure that these two blocks are executing. So I've now achieved steps one and two. I've walked 10 steps right and 20 steps left. The next challenge was to move 10 steps upwards. So I'm going to go back to motion. And this time, I'm going to want to change my Y value. So I'm going to say change Y by 10. And let's check to see if Y by 10 is actually upwards. So I'm going to get rid of the code I've done so far and place change Y by 10 underneath the when green flag clicked. Now only code that's connected to this block executes. So any code I've got over here isn't going to run. So let's hit that green flag. And yes, I'm moving 10 steps up in the Y direction. Okay, I'm just gonna put Bob back at zero, zero because we've sort of been moving him all over the stage right now. So Bob's back at zero, zero, right in the middle of my screen, and I'm gonna add change Y by 10 to the bottom of my code. And I'm gonna put all of my code together now. Oh, one thing I haven't done. I might just want to add another one second wait 
so that I can see that executing. So now when I hit green, I should move right by 10, left by 20, up by 10. Perfect. So now I've achieved steps one through to three. The fourth step is to spin 180 degrees so that Bob is upside down. Now I am, I'm just gonna add another wait one second now so that I can see these things execute step by step. And I'm gonna go back to motion and we can see that there is a turn. So I'm gonna put turn 15 degrees. Now I do wanna check that so I don't want everything to run. What happens if Bob turns by 180 degrees? Let's check that. And that's exactly what I want Bob to do. Now, unfortunately, Bob is already upside down now, and that's not what I want him to be. So probably the fastest way of getting Bob back to level is to just run my code one more time and turn him 360 degrees. Now I'm gonna pull off that code and I'm gonna add it to the bottom of my sequence. Now the final thing that I want Bob to do is to say, help, I'm upside down. I'm gonna add another one second wait. And then I'm gonna to go to looks because the speech bubble is actually a look. And I'm gonna say for two seconds, oh, help, I'm upside down. And there we have it. That should be everything that I wanted us to do in this activity. So I'm going to check my code, I'm going to hit the green flag, and I should go right by 10, left by 20, up 10, spin upside down, and say, help, I'm upside down. Perfect.